The best indicator of whether or not a plot twist is well executed usually lies within the viewer's initial response. Before we allow our personal biases to leak in, we feel an initial respect or disappointment. Respect if the plot twist brings sense to earlier buildups and acts as a means of clarification, or disappointment if it was done strictly for shock value or as a low effort conclusion. However, before we get into the details, the biggest disclaimer here is that genre does matter. In silly action movies, Naruto brand shonen or comedies, I'm much more lenient with plot twists being performed with virtually no buildup. This is because, no matter how serious some of the elements of this media may be, there are parts that we can't help but to watch through a satirical lens. <laughs> Uh, uh, what? He kicked off his shoe to increase his range? And cheap plot twists, if done for exaggeration or humor, have the intended effect. Because no matter how much I love shonen, it always has an element of exaggeration. Which leads me to make this distinction. Moment-to-moment -moment plot twists with no build-up are okay. Which is why shonen and action movies, which use exaggerated moment-to-moment -moment plot twists usually in action scenes with no lead-up, are off the hook when it comes to most plot twist taboos. However, the second a show or movie starts to take a twist too seriously without putting in the effort, it's going to leave the audience feeling frustrated. So if the media isn't using a plot twist in moment-to-moment -moment writing, or in a humorous, shallow manner, then what makes it successful? Like I said, it all boils down to the audience's immediate response. A plot twist isn't meant to be some gotcha moment that leaves the audience feeling cheated. It's supposed to impress the audience and allow them to look back at the story through a new perspective. And one of the first things any literature class will drill into you is understanding the difference between surprise and suspense. And while neither are inherently bad, writers often interchange their usage. Naruto, for all of the faults it has, usually uses surprise and suspense properly. Plot twists like, how did you know I was not Iruka? Because I am Iruka, qualify as surprise, but exist in the moment-to-moment -moment action sequences. Plot twists like Toby's identity were born from speculation, subtle hints, and eventual explanation, making it more suspenseful. But I don't think surprise and suspense have to exist separately. In fact, finding a balance can create solid plot twists. Like when Lilith revealed that she was the one who cursed Ida, I gasped, but after thinking about it, it made so much sense based on what already occurred in the plot. I had been waiting for this reveal before I realized I was waiting at all. I understood why Lilith wanted Ida to join the Emperor's Coven so badly. When Carmen realizes the truth about Shadow-san, the fact he tried so hard to keep her from progressing as a child makes sense. Even my favorite obscure anime of the month, Zombieland Saga, has the sudden reveal that Kotaro knew Sakura when she was alive, and it brings a new light as to why he chose zombies to make his new group. But suspense can also work against a piece of media. One of the strongest instances of suspense from my childhood was everyone wondering what happened to Zuko's mom, especially because they teased it in the series finale. We waited half a decade to find out, and when the Search comic was released, I couldn't help but feel that all of this suspense led to a rather dry plot twist. I may have judged it a bit harshly upon first reading it, because it's still a decent story that fits with the world it's been built in, but it just made me feel a bit cheated. And it's hard to keep the same tone from a cartoon to comics, I know that, but I can't help but feel that no one had ideas for what actually happened to Ursa during the creation of the original series. In fact, it feels kind of like an afterthought. But back to the stories that did blend suspense and surprise together properly. All of these plot twists made me gasp, stop, and reconsider the entire plot in a new light. And while this next part isn't necessary in making a good twist, it's definitely a fun addition. Dropping a twist so intense that the next time the audience watches this piece of media, they get to experience it in an entirely different manner. The Good Place does this by completely rearranging the premise of the character's situation. Why Women Kill tells us immediately that three people will die, and we must watch to discover who these bodies belong to. In The Good Place, the audience's second watch consists of them picking up on little hints that they may have missed out on the first time, whereas Why Women Kill, during the second watch, it allows the audience to pick up on how the characters change, all while knowing what it leads to. Plot twists that shift the premise can exist in a whole season, one arc, one episode. There's no one way to follow the unspoken rule of twists. So what is, in Shannon's super effing relevant opinion, the most well-executed plot twist? For me, it's the plot twists regarding who is working with who and The Handmaiden. I don't want to say too much, but there are three and a half major plot twists that each shed light upon what already happened through reframing the perspective, as well as setting up for the final portion of the movie, the final portion being what is now happening in 
real time, with no more skipping forward or going back to the same events. Using the same events from perspectives of different characters as a means of dividing the movie is not only genius, but it has the audience on their feet the entire time, and I can only describe this movie as a series of plot twists, from small to large, and this forces the viewer to be engaged even in the slightest details. And going back to the concept of rewatch value, every time I watch this movie, I notice details that I overlooked in the previous watches. I think what I respect about The Handmaiden the most is that it follows all of the basic guidelines for plot twists, but then it risks its own integrity by attempting to weave together multiple giant, and I mean huge twists, that reframe the entire narrative. It's ambitious with a wonderful payoff, so if you're a fan of plot twists, this is actually a must-watch. So to recap, make the audience feel a balance of surprise and shock, but don't make them feel as though they've been tricked by not giving any previous indications of this twist. If you are going to make a twist with no backing, make sure it's done in a satirical manner or done in moment-to-moment -moment writing rather than as part of the overarching plot. Have the twist provide the viewer with a fresh perspective that clarifies earlier points. Consider the rewatch value of the story, specifically pertaining to the twist. Will this twist ruin the audience's next rewatch? Or will this twist allow the audience to view the story in a completely different manner from the first time? Of course, none of these are set rules, but it's definitely food for thought.